space exploration has been a fascinating area of research and discovery for humanity. From the first man on the moon to the discovery of water on Mars, space exploration has captivated our imagination for decades. With the launch of the James Webb Telescope, space exploration entered a new era of discovery and innovation, custom-made to find and study the very first galaxies. Webb's unprecedentedly powerful infrared gaze is already delivering insights from across cosmic history, whether concerning the early evolution of the universe or the atmospheric chemistry of nearby exoplanets. Given its presently unparalleled capabilities and its price tag of more than $10 billion, some might consider the James Webb Space Telescope the one telescope to rule them all. Although it might seem that the world changed long ago from the Hubble era to the James Webb era, the reality is that humanity's greatest space-based observatory of all time is less than two years old. It launched on Christmas Day 2021 and required six months of deployment, commissioning, and calibration operations before it was ready to begin the primary phase of its life, full-time science operations. Since those milestones were achieved in July of 2022, the James Webb Telescope has been our cosmic workhorse, revealing the universe in a whole new light with unprecedented resolution and wavelength coverage. Thanks to Webb's superior power, we've come far enough to put together the broad strokes of how our universe grew up, and it's looking like a story that will lead to decades of additional research to robustly put all of the pieces together. The very first stars must have formed long before James Webb is observing, likely within a time period just 100 to 200 million years after the Big Bang. The earliest galaxies that we see are likely the brightest and most massive ones from their time, and they exist in great numbers 500 million years after the Big Bang and quite abundantly even 300 to 400 million years after the Big Bang. Many galaxy candidates exist from when the universe was only 250 to 300 million years old, and there's every reason to hope that many of them will truly turn out to be confirmed galaxies once all is said and done. But when we look at these very early galaxies, we do get the impression that something is amiss. Many of these early galaxies that James Webb is finding have peculiar, puzzling properties about them that appear difficult to reconcile with the theoretical picture that the universe has painted for us. It's not that galaxies weren't forming back then because they were, but they weren't like this, the ones spotted in this study are as far from previous research and models have told us too red to be as bright as they are and too bright to be as red as they are. Their bold color is what marks these galaxies as so old. As the universe expands and objects fly farther away from us faster and faster, the light they produce gets more and more stretched out, and the more stretched out light gets, the redder it looks. Objects moving towards us, on the other hand, look blue because their motion compresses light rather than stretching it out. This elongating of light is called redshift, and it's one of the ways astronomers date things in the universe. Things that are incredibly old like these galaxies have a very high redshift and appear bright red in observational data. But not only are these galaxies red, their brightness indicates that they are big, way bigger than they should be. Calculations done by the research team suggest that these six galactic candidates are each about the size of our own Milky Way, and according to almost all of our best models, there just shouldn't have been enough stuff present in the universe that early to form these things. The objects are so impossible, in fact, that according to a statement, the team has been informally referring to them as universe breakers. These galaxies disagree with about 99% of our current models of the early universe, demanding some serious reinvestigation into a matter many researchers thought was pretty much settled. As Joel Leher, one of the authors of the study, said in a press release, what's funny is we have all these things we hope to learn from James Webb, and this was nowhere near the top of the list. We found something we never thought to ask the universe. In other words, the fact that James Webb saw so many galaxies with these properties so early on is puzzling, so we're wondering, do we really understand the early phases of the formation of these galaxies? And this truly has posed a lot of questions for the theorists. The most startling explanation is that the canonical CDM cosmological model is wrong and requires revision. As Michael Boylan Colchin, a cosmologist at the University of Texas at Austin, said, these results are very surprising and hard to get in our standard model of cosmology, and it's probably not a small change, we'd have to go back to the drawing board. One controversial idea is modified Newtonian dynamics, MOND, which posits that dark matter does not exist and that its effects can instead be explained by large-scale fluctuations in gravity. To date, James Webb's observations could support such a theory, according to MOND, who is one of the idea's leading proponents. 
however, others remain unconvinced. So far, everything that we've tried to test in MOND hasn't been able to really provide a satisfactory answer, says Jan Kalirai, an astrophysicist at the Rochester Institute of Technology. One simpler solution is that galaxies in the early universe could have little or no dust, making them appear brighter. This scenario could confound efforts to calculate the galaxy's true masses and could perhaps also explain why ALMA had difficulty spotting galaxies at Z equals 13. Alternatively, many scientists believe that James Webb's rapid discovery of early galaxies might be testing our understanding of how these halos form, perhaps suggesting they reached an immense bulk earlier than expected. One explanation might involve the very nature of dark matter itself. Theorists have found that simple treatments of dark matter, in which it only interacts with itself and normal matter via gravity, can accurately replicate large-scale cosmic structures. But nature has no guarantee of simplicity. In reality, dark matter could interact with itself because of an as yet unknown force, perhaps via a particle that's not in the current standard model of physics, possibly increasing the speed at which these halos grew and explaining. How big bright galaxies were able to arise so quickly remains a fascinating puzzle. Perhaps, instead, these halos were simply more efficient at drawing in regular matter to feed star formation, according to Jorge Pia, a cosmologist at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland. This is probably telling us something about how stars form in dark matter halos early on. Today, our galaxy produces roughly one new star per year, but Marco Castellano's paper, based on James Webb's first data, suggests that star formation rates must have been at least 20 times higher in his and Nida's two candidate galaxies. Another Webb-derived preprint paper posits that Milky Way-sized galaxies could have arisen just a half billion years after the Big Bang, a scenario that would demand star formation rates 10 times higher still than Castellano's estimates. But according to Michael Bourne Kushan, such outsized rates of star formation stretch the boundaries of what is physically possible. If those values are correct, you'd need to have galaxies turning all their mass into stars and forming stars as fast as they could. A perhaps more plausible possibility is that stars were somehow more atmospheric molecule, smashing the molecule apart to form a shower of subatomic particles. These rain down on HAWC, which is a peculiar kind of telescope consisting of 300 water tanks, each filled with 200 metric tons of water. The subatomic particles from the collision between a gamma ray and a molecule are moving so fast that when they enter water, they actually move faster than the speed of light through water, which is slightly slower than through a vacuum or through air. The subatomic particles produce a flash of light, a kind of visual equivalent of a sonic boom called Cherenkov radiation. The HAWC data revealed subatomic particles that had come from solar gamma rays with energies of about a trillion electron volts, or one tera electron volt, and a few that had energies up to nearly 10 tera electron volts. A cutoff. Occasionally, a pulsar will be seen to push through this cutoff. The pulsar in the Crab Nebula has been seen to emit gamma rays that peak at one tera electron volt. However, the crab pulsar's peak has been utterly smashed by gamma rays detected coming from a pulsar in the Vela supernova understanding of how electrons are accelerated in strong magnetic fields is incomplete. The universe's biggest explosion was also revealed through new research in May in the monthly notices of the Royal Astronomical Society. The explosion, ten times brighter than any known supernova and still erupting even now, was discovered in a galaxy whose light has been traveling to us for 8 billion years. Catalogued as AT2021 LWX, the explosive event was co-discovered by the ZTF in California and the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System in Hawaii. At its brightest, AT2021 LWX shone with a luminosity two trillion times brighter than our Sun astronomers suspect that AT2021 LWX is not an exploding star, as such explosions fade after a few weeks or months, but rather a supermassive black hole consuming a huge cloud of gas perhaps a cloud thousand times more massive than the sun. Astronomers themselves call this a tidal disruption event. No such event on this scale has ever been witnessed before. The gas cloud is ripped apart by the vice-like gravitational tidal forces of the black hole, sending shockwaves reverberating through the tortured cloud and releasing huge amounts of energy. With new facilities like the Vera Rubin Observatory's Legacy Survey of Space and Time coming online in the next few years, we are hoping to discover more events like this and learn more about them, said Southampton's Philip Wiseman. It could be that these events, although extremely rare, are so energetic that they are key processes to how the centers of galaxies change over time.
for the most distant fast radio burst, a groundbreaking discovery was made. The most distant fast radio burst, FRB, ever detected was revealed in 2023. A report in the October 19 issue of the journal Science described how on June 19, 2022, an FRB was spotted having traveled through space for a gargantuan 8 billion years. FRBs are mysterious, they are short bursts of radio waves that last mere milliseconds, yet in that short fraction of time, they can emit as much energy as our sun does in 30 years. Nobody knows what produces them, often, they are seen to go off randomly in the universe, sometimes, they are even seen to repeat. Magnetars, which are extremely magnetic neutron stars, the main suspects. The record-breaking burst was detected by the Australian Square Kilometre Array Pathfinder, RSCAP, which is a group of 36 radio dishes. RSCAP pinpointed the location of the burst, catalogued as FRB 20220610A, which then allowed the Very Large Telescope in Chile to follow up and identify the source as a system of two or three colliding galaxies that we see as they were 8 billion years ago. Because FRB 20220610A has had to travel through so much space to reach us, it encounters lots of rogue electrons that live in that intergalactic space. The electrons steal some of the radio wave's energy, depending on the wavelength, which results in the radio signal becoming slightly dispersed. The more an FRB signal is dispersed, the more electrons it has passed through, therefore, the measure of dispersion could tell us about hidden stores of atomic matter that are otherwise undetectable. While we still don't know what causes these massive bursts of energy, the paper confirms that fast radio bursts are common events in the cosmos and that we will be able to use them to detect matter between galaxies and better understand the structure of the universe, said Ryan Shannon of Swinburne University in Australia. This white dwarf is an interstellar speed demon. The fastest runaway stars ever seen speeding through our galaxy were revealed in July by astronomers poring over data of stellar motions collected by the European Space Agency's Gaia satellite. Six new hypervelocity stars were discovered, and two of them, catalogued as J9276 plus 335 and J12353 plus 752, are the speediest ever seen racing through space at 2,850 km per second and 1,694 km per second, respectively. To put that into context, J9276 plus 335 could orbit around the Earth 694 times in an hour, aka not quite as fast as Christopher Reeve's Superman, but still pretty fast. The stars are white dwarfs, which are the cause of sun-like stars that have stopped their intrinsic fusion reactions, puffed off their outer layers, and expired. Astronomers suspect the white dwarfs once belonged in binary systems where the white dwarf's companion star exploded in a cataclysmic supernova, giving the white dwarf an almighty kick. According to Karim L. Bodri of the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics, these stars are extraordinary because they are traveling much faster than normal stars in the Milky Way. Because they are faster than the galactic escape velocity, they'll soon be launched into intergalactic space. That's all the information for today. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes. And be sure to also tell us what you think about today's content. Everyone's support motivates us to continue delivering quality content and to always improve. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.